Hello my friends, I'm Clover and this is a puzzle called The Spice Must Flow by Philip Newman. This was posted in Gas on September 18th, 2024. That said, before we get started, I have something interesting to tell you about. So this Friday evening, my time into Saturday, um, I'm going to be participating in a Twitch stream on the SudokuCon channel, twitch.tv slash SudokuCon, where um, I will be trying to help solve the Katerdoku Pillar, which is a recent project by my fellow um, YouTuber and puzzle setter, Meme Rister. Uh, and something like 150 or 180 puzzle setters collaborated to create a massive series of linked 6x6 Sudokus. And now my friend Glipperl and I are going to be attempting an endurance solve stream of it to raise money for technical costs related to streaming SudokuCon in April. So please join us there uh, Friday evening. That is the 20th. We're starting at midnight my time. So that is 1 a.m. on Saturday, U.S. Eastern time. Each hour, we're going to need more donations to get us to keep going for another hour, and there's not a cap, so if you guys want to keep donating for SudokuCon, we are going to continue solving 6x6 Sudoku until, um, until donations stop coming in. So please do come join us, pop in anytime Friday night or Saturday during the day, watch us slowly lose our minds, and solve a bunch of really good puzzles. Hope to see you there. This puzzle, though, is a gas puzzle from September 18th. It is an arrow Sudoku. So we have normal Sudoku rules. So we're placing the digits one through nine, once each in each row, each column, and each three by three region. And then also there are these arrows in the grid. So in a typical arrow Sudoku, each arrow has an associated circle and whatever digit goes in that cell, like for, for instance, if this was a nine, the digits along the arrow would have to sum to that value. So these three digits would have to sum to nine. This puzzle has one kind of unusual feature, actually a couple unusual features. For one, it has some two-digit arrow pills, meaning that, for example, we're going to read these two cells as a two-digit number going from top to bottom. So if this was, say, a two and a four, then we would read this sum as 24. And we're going to read this one as a two-digit sum going from left to right. So if this was a one and a six, we would read this, well, that's impossible, one and a seven, we would read this as 17, and then the sum of these three would be 17. There are also some arrows that only have a single cell on the arrow, and that just means that whatever goes here is the same as whatever goes here. So we do know that these are nine and six, respectively, right away. Last thing. We do have a couple of arrows in the grid that have, or a couple of bulbs that have multiple arrows coming out of them. And in this case, in arrow Sudoku, you sum each arrow independently. So whatever goes here has to equal the sum of these three numbers. And then separately, it also has to equal the sum of these three numbers. So if this was a six, then these would sum, or these four numbers, then these four numbers would sum to six, which by the way is impossible. And then also these three numbers separately would sum to six. So let's carry on solving. This is a bit of a tricky one. That's why it's called the spice must flow. We often refer to gas puzzles that are a little more challenging as being spicy. And this is definitely a spicy puzzle, but I've pre-solved it. I found it to be really interestingly constructed. And I'll try to point out some of the things I really enjoyed about this as I work through it with you. So this middle arrow, whatever this is has to be bigger than five. So it's six, seven, eight, or nine. And we can make some eliminations because there's a six in the column. So that's out. And then also for this to be seven, that would have to be a two. For this to be eight, that would be a three. And for this to be nine, that would be a four. But we can't use two or three because there is a um, two and three in the row. So that makes this a nine with a sum of four. Okay, let's look at this row now because this row is becoming more restricted as we fill in some digits. We need a one, six, a seven, and an eight in the row. So I can eliminate eight from those cells. And I can also eliminate one here because one can't be the sum of two other digits. I can eliminate seven from these cells because there's a seven in the region. And I can eliminate one here because again, one can't be the sum of two other digits. Now, if I look at this situation, whatever this is has to be the sum of four numbers. So the biggest this could possibly be is nine. And then the smallest this could possibly be is one which means that these three numbers, whatever they are, can only sum to an absolute maximum of eight. And there's no way to make that happen with a six or an eight in those cells, so we can only use a one. 
Therefore, this can't be a 1, and this is going to be an 8. Let's look at some of the other longer arrows. So this arrow is the sum of three digits that all see each other, so it has to be a minimum of 6, 6, 7, 8, or 9, but we're going to eliminate 7 and 8 because those are already in that column. This must be 7, 8, or 9 because these three sum to a minimum of 6, and this is a minimum of 1. So the smallest value this could possibly have would be 7. Similarly, this must be 7, 8, or 9, but because of the 9s here, it can't be a 9. These three, again, sum to a minimum of 6, so this must be either 1 or 2. 2 is the absolute biggest it could be. It could be 2 if this was an 8, and then these three digits were 1, 2, and 3. Otherwise, it couldn't. This arrow, again, sum of three digits, so it has to be 6, 7, 8, or 9. We've already used 6, 7, and 8, so that is going to be a 9. This region is now starting to get restricted, so I'm going to pencil mark this as 1, 2, 4, and 5. And I'm going to start disentangling this by looking at these two-digit arrow bulbs. So the absolute biggest this could ever be would be if this was 8 plus... Well, actually, there can't even be a 9 in those. 7 plus 8 plus 9. So the biggest this could ever be would be 24. So it must start with either a 1 or a 2. But because there's a 1 in the column, it starts with a 2. And I just said a moment ago the biggest it could be is 24. So it is either 23 or 24 because we can't use a 1, we can't use a 2. So without a 9 here, the biggest this could be would be 7 and 8, which makes 15. And in order to make 23 out of 15, we would need a total of 8 more, so that could be an 8. To make 24, we would need 9 more. This could also be 6 plus 8 in theory. That's the lowest we could possibly go without using a 9. And if this was 6 plus 8, this would have to be a 9, and then we would get to a sum of 23. So this is either 8 or 9. This can't be a 6, this can't be an 8 just by Sudoku rules. So that's some progress there. Because this is a 2, I promised we'd come back over here. This is also a maximum of 24, but it can't start with a 2 anymore by Sudoku rules, so it starts with a 1. And therefore 1 is in one of these two cells here. Now... Where did I go next when I was solving this? One of these is definitely going to be a 9. This can no longer be a 6 because this 2 here keeps me from making these three cells 1, 2, 3. So this must be a 9. The only way to make a 9 in three cells without using a 2 is to use the digits 1, 3, 5. These two digits can't be 1 by Sudoku, so this is going to be my 1. And so I have a 1 over here. I'm going to pencil mark these four cells now. These are 3, 4, 5, and 6. I can't have a 6 on here because then, actually, I can't even have a 5 on here. Because even if there was just a 5 on here, the lowest this could be would be um, 1, 3, 5, which is already 9. It means I can't put anything in this cell. So I can't use a 5 or a 6. This must be 1, 3, and 4, which sums to 8, plus a 1, and then my total is 9. That makes this 2, which means I'm at maximum here. This has to be 1, 2, 3, which is the minimum, and this has to be an 8. And I can eliminate 1 from those cells, and that fully resolves how these digits go. The 3, 4 pair there gives me a 5 and a 3. The sum of 8 gives me a 5, and then I can fill this in as a 6. I can eliminate 5 from these cells as well because I just placed a 5, and I can also eliminate 1 using this 1 here. The 2, 4 pair that gives me does some work. Places a 5 and a 1, gives me a 3 and a 4. Now these two digits in this row will be 3 and 8, and these will be 6 and 7. So now if we look here, this sum is either 12 or 14 by looking at the arrow bulb. If it was 12, this the lowest this could be, these two cells, would be 5 plus 6, but then this has to be at least 3, so that would bring us up to 14 already. So actually, 14 is the minimal. We can't do 12 at all, and 14 is going to require us to make all of our digits as low as possible. So that gives us this 2 and 7, the 7 gives us a 6, and because we now have a 6 on this arrow, 9 is 6 plus 1. It's 6 plus 1 plus 2, which go in that order because of the 1 there. These are 3 plus 7. And I think I can place a 3 here. That's going to be a hidden 3 in the region. And these are 4, 5, and 7. These are 6, 8, and 9. No 6 there because of the 6s here. So that is a 6. And these will be 2, 4, and 5. That can't be a 2. I have a 3 here, so that makes this a 4 and makes this a 5. 
So now I have 14 equals 2 plus 4 plus what? Well, 2 plus 4 is 6, so I need to add an additional 8 to get to 14. Over here, I need 4, 7, 8, and 9. These can't be 8. This also can't be 7 or 9, so that's 4. That resolves the 2, 4. And these, to finish off the row, will be 3, 5, 7, 9. Neither of them are 3 because I have 3s here and here. In fact, 3 has to go there, which forces 9 into that cell. Now I know that's 3, that's 7, and this is going to be an 8, and I can finish this region. So 24 is 8 plus 9 plus 7, so that's resolved. And I need a 2 to finish the region, which is going to go right there. I need a 6 to finish the column, and the column is fully complete. And now I need a 7 to finish this column. This column is fully complete. I need a 5 and 8 to finish this column. I need a 7 and 8 to finish this column. And the 7 will resolve that, and that will also bounce back here and take care of my 5a pair. Now that I have a 5, 7 here, I know this is a 4. The 7 here tells me this is a 5, and that's a 7. These will be 4 and 5. They go like that. This can't be a 1, so this is a 1. And these will be 2, 3, and 6. And I can finish off. I can either use that arrow in the bottom left, or I can use standard Sudoku to finish that. Hope you enjoyed that one. I really liked that. It was a little bit trickier than most gas puzzles. There was a bit of math to it, so I hope you just kind of slowed down, took your time with it, and enjoyed it. If you haven't solved it yet and you'd like to, the link to solve it is in the description below this video. Check it out and I will see you in three days.